The Marvel Cinematic Universe has managed to fill up over the years with a full roster of heroes, sidekicks, supporting characters, and bad guys. With a few notable and sad exceptions, our heroes have generally prevailed, but that doesn't mean that all the villains have been stopped completely. Today, we're looking at some MCU villains still out there, waiting for their time to strike. Surtor most myths and religions have an end time story built in, but Norse mythology has one of the best. It's got everything. A giant wolf, a serpent, a guy with a flaming sword. It all ends in a big fight that sinks the world to be reborn again. In Thor Ragnarok, things go a little differently. One thing that's the same is Surtur, the fire giant from Muspelheim. Thor first runs across Surtur in his search for the Infinity Stones where he finds out that Odin isn't really Odin in Asgard. Thor defeats Surtur and places his crown in the Asgardian vaults for safekeeping while he sorts out his brother's deception and finds Odin in time for him to say goodbye to his sons. Unfortunately, they don't get much time to grieve before their older sister shows up and starts breaking stuff. It turns out the Odinsons can't beat their big sis, so they have to put Surtur's crown on the eternal flame and to bring about Ragnarok and the end of Asgard as a source of Hela's power. Once they convince the ever-loving Hulk to not smash Surtur, the Asgardians leave watching Surtur defeat Hela and destroy Asgard. Now that Asgard is destroyed, there's no telling what's next for the fire giant because he's still out there. The Leader the Hulk is a tricky figure. His rogues gallery at one point or another has managed to include, well, everyone. That's not to say that the Hulk doesn't have a few people with his name on the top of their most hated list, though. General Ross, the Hulkbusters, and of course, Abomination have a special hate for the Hulk, both of which were featured in the Hulk's only solo MCU movie, The Incredible Hulk. In the movie, Samuel Stearns, the man who becomes the leader, is a scientist, a trade up from his janitor origins in the comics, trying to help Banner solve his Hulk problems as Mr. Blue. He's later drafted by General Ross and Emil Blonsky to create the Abomination and square off against the Hulk in New York. When that goes predictably wrong, Stearns ends up injured in the wreckage of his science lab with gamma-contaminated banner blood getting in his head wound. We last see him grinning maniacally as his head starts to grow like his comic book counterpart. In the comic book tie-in, Fury's Big Week, Black Widow runs across the emerging leader, whose intellect is already growing. Though Widow shoots the leader in the leg and puts him in shield custody, he's one of the more clever villains in a universe full of clever people. After the collapse of S.H.I.E.L.D., there's no telling what the leader could have gotten up to. Abomination if the leader is the brains behind the Hulk's rogues gallery, Abomination is the brawn. Emil Blonsky is a special forces soldier who's been lent to General Ross and his Hulkbuster unit to try and rein in the big green guy before. As far as they know, he destroys everything. In the movie, Blonsky is an aging soldier who's concerned that he's losing a step. In the fight against the unstoppable force that is the Hulk, he starts looking for an edge, first with some thawed remnant of the super soldier serum that created Captain America, then with the help of the future leader, Samuel Stearns, and some banner gang irradiated blood to become the Abomination. After the Hulk beats the Abomination in the New York City fight, he too ends up in custody. Here lies the tricky part. Fury needs Ross to approve the Avengers initiative, but there's no way Ross is going to sign off on the Hulk as one of Earth's mightiest heroes. We learn in the Marvel one-shot The Consultant that Agents Coulson and Sitwell use Tony Stark's brashness to keep the Abomination out of the Avengers initiative. But that doesn't tell us what Ross's plan for Abomination is. Now that the Hulk's back on Earth, we might see him used to stop the Hulk once again. Mordo Baron Mordo has been an adversary of Doctor Strange since the beginning. In the MCU, he's just Mordo, not a Baron, at least as far as we know. Here, he's not so much a rival for Doctor Strange, but a traditionalist in the Order of Sorcerers who's a stickler for the rules. Sorcerers, for Mordo, protect our reality as well as the fundamental rules of sorcery. You don't mess with time, you don't make deals with the Dark Dimension. When Strange defeats Kaecilius and Dormammu by doing both of those things, and he learns of the Ancient One's bending of the rules, Mordo has has had enough. While Strange and Wong set up shop in the New York Sanctum, Mordo pays a visit to part-time sorcerer Jonathan Pangborn to take away the magic that makes it possible for him to walk. He's not just being a jerk. He's decided that there are too many sorcerers in this world. Of course, Strange was dusted in the snap, but before he went, he told Tony that this was the only way. So when the snap is undone and Doctor Strange returns to his post, it's a sure bet that Mordo will be there to challenge him and his role as Sorcerer Supreme. The Tinkerer 
For fans of comic book movies, nothing makes them more nervous than seeing a growing list of villains. It seems like the more a franchise goes on, the more villains are jammed in a movie, and before you know it, you have Batman and Robin, and nobody wants that. Spider-Man Homecoming was the third iteration of Spider-Man in the movies, but the first one to take place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. While it contained several members of Spider-Man's rogues gallery, including two different shockers, the Prowler, who we also known as Miles Morales' uncle, the Vulture, and the Tinkerer. Where Homecoming succeeded was in using minor Spider-Man villains in support of the main one to fill the spider world, instead of just compiling the threats against the titular hero. In his role as supporter, the Tinkerer is the tech mastermind behind Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture, schemes. He reverse engineers the alien tech and designs the weapons that they sell. He's the one who talks Toomes into the attempt on moving day, but he's just the tech support. When that goes wrong, he's nowhere to be found. While the Tinkerer doesn't generally pose a direct threat to Spider-Man, he has been known to, well, tinker, and the MCU has no shortage of people who want something special to do. Mandarin in the comics, the Mandarin has ten rings on his fingers that have cosmic powers which have been used to make trouble for Stark and friends. For the MCU, the Mandarin became Trevor Slattery, an out-of-work actor tricked by Aldrich Killian as a way to draw out Stark and hide AIM's extremist experiments that are having explosive consequences. Creating a super terrorist to cover up science experiments is a bit of a pretzel, but it's perfect supervillain logic. Slattery is arrested, but in the one-shot Hail to the King, we get a hint that the real Mandarin is out there somewhere. And he's none too pleased with Slattery's portrayal. There are other hints out there, too. The terrorists that capture Stark and force the creation of the first-generation Iron Man suit are called the Ten Rings, an allusion to the Mandarin's Ten Rings. We may get a real Mandarin in the future. Helmut Zemo Baron Zemo comes from a long line of Zemos all bent on power. While the previous Zemos have failed for various reasons, the good Baron tends to fail because Captain America is there to stop him. In the MCU, Baron Zemo loses his fancy crown, sword, and his Baron title. The MCU doesn't like Barons, and becomes a Sokovian EKO Scorpion Special Forces officer who loses his family when Ultron tries to use a city in Sokovia as a pog to destroy the world. This sets off an intricate conspiracy of revenge that includes tearing apart the Avengers from the inside, using Captain America's loyalty to his friend and brainwashed assassin Bucky Barnes and Barnes' unfortunate connection to Stark to break the bonds that tie the Avengers together. Once he's done his work and Captain America and Tony Stark go their separate ways, Zemo plans to end himself, only to be stopped by T'Challa, the Black Panther who's fostering a new understanding of the destructive power of vengeance. He ends up in maximum security with Everett Ross, mistakenly assuming that Zemo has been beaten. As clever as Zemo was in Civil War, it's entirely likely that prison isn't going to be enough to contain him, and he could cause trouble for Earth's mightiest heroes in the future. He probably still won't wear that purple sock mask, though. Red Skull Superman has Lex Luthor, Batman the Joker, Spider-Man has Green Goblin, for Captain America, his signature villain is the notorious Red Skull. The Red Skull even managed to span time, so that he could menace Captain America in World War II and after his unfreezing. A super soldier in his own right, and former leader of Hydra, Red Skull is the antithesis of the all-American Steve Rogers. In the MCU, Red Skull was an earlier attempt at the super soldier serum, who has plans for Hydra beyond the Nazis' goals. When he takes Arnim Zola's Tesseract-powered weapon, to attack the United States, it's up to Captain America to stop him. It's Red Skull's attempt to handle the powerful Space Stone in its Tesseract housing that causes him to be shoved through a portal in time and space. It wasn't until that shocking reveal in Infinity War did we find out that he was fated to look after the Soul Stone. It was his grim duty to inform anyone who wants the power of the Soul Stone that it comes with a grave cost, one Thanos was willing to pay. Now that Thanos has the Soul Stone, Red Skull is free again, though lacking his super soldier body. What happens What's next is anyone's guess. Dormammu in the world of the MCU, we learn that the Avengers protect the world from external threats like the Chitauri, while Doctor Strange and the Sanctums protect the Earth from threats coming from other dimensions, and its ruler is the striped figure Dormammu. Dormammu has been a Doctor Strange villain in the comics for a long time, often plotting and scheming to have his dominion over the Dark Dimension extend to ours, usually through manipulating agents here in our dimension. The MCU isn't that different, with Dormammu manipulating Kaecilius to open our dimension to the Dark Dimension by promising him the eternal life 
life. Even the Ancient One has been leaking power from the Dark Dimension to extend her life. In perhaps one of the best moments of the MCU, Doctor Strange outsmarts the more powerful Dormammu and gets him to agree to leave our dimension alone. In the comics, this is a bargain that Dormammu has made on more than one occasion and has found various ways and loopholes to get out of his promise and menace Doctor Strange in our dimension again and again. It stands to reason that the MCU Dormammu is scheming a way out of his promise too. The Elders there are a few pantheons in the Marvel Universe. Not only are the Norse gods present, but there's also the Olympians, including Hercules. On top of mythological beings, the Marvel Universe also has its own kind of pantheon that comes in the form of the Elders. Each Elder is the last of their respective race, ancient beings who've become obsessed with one aspect of the universe. In the comics, there are 20 Elders. In the MCU, we've only met three of them. Ego the Living Planet turns out to be Peter Quill's absent father who was beaten by the Guardians of the Galaxy. There are two others, though that are left bouncing around the MCU. In Thor Ragnarok, we meet the Grandmaster, the Elder obsessed with games of skill and chance. Here, he runs Sakaar, the gladiator world where the Hulk has become its champion. While Hulk and Thor stage a coup in order to escape the planet, we last see the Grandmaster calling the coup a draw. The Guardians of the Galaxy introduced us to the Collector. As his name suggests, he's obsessed with collections, including everything from Infinity Stones to Howard the Duck. While Thanos did get the Reality Stone from the Collector, we don't know what happened to him afterwards. It's hard to discern what the Elder's plans are, but they generally don't work out for us mere mortals. Those are the MCU villains that are still lurking about, ready to cause trouble. Who else did we leave out that remains at large? Or who would you like to see return? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to CBR for more MCU content. Thanks for watching.